The eBridge project looks at factors that help or hinder the acceptance of electric car fleets. We monitor seven fleets in six countries in terms of actual car trips, distances covered and charging practices. More interestingly for us, we also monitor user acceptance, driving experience, perceived advantages and disadvantages of uh, electric cars, as well as users' environmental attitudes and behavioural spillover. In this particular example, in a fleet of six cars in West Wales, we recorded drivers' perceptions and addressed some of the misconceptions around electric cars. For example, many drivers thought that electric cars can only cover distances of about 10-15 miles, while in reality this is closer to 65 miles. I was nervous in the beginning because it was an automatic and I've never driven an automatic before. You've got to be very wary of how you drive, you've got to try and keep it in that little eco zone. I like that it's a greener form of transport. I think that's an, an incentive for me. Economic, it drives quite well. The other people who've driven them, they've all commented on how sort of fast and responsive they are. Range anxiety. We are quite a rural area. Our longest range in the electric car is around the 65 miles. My big hang up with them is the, is the lack of sound. And obviously we, we deal a lot with schools in our job. Driving to a school where the car doesn't make any noise, you've got to be more careful. It takes so long to charge up. The normal charger, it takes about 12 hours. Style, um, coolness. If they're booked out for an afternoon, for somebody in the afternoon, then because they can't, there's not enough time to charge them up in between journeys, they sit there doing nothing in the morning. The fuel economy, obviously, in the cars, we've, I've started looking at that on my, my personal car. I look at that now. Not really based on, well, it wouldn't be the electric car, maybe think of it anyway. Because there's the question over, you know, how the energy is sourced to sort of um, recharge the batteries. They actually are far, far too expensive as they are. You know, I've contemplated having one myself, but the problem I've got is I'm on a main road and I've got no sort of garage or driveway to park it. No. If I wanted to take a long journey, a few hundred miles away, then it, the car isn't going to do it. you just got to be careful, really, when you're driving. If you're putting your foot down, then the consumption's just, it's just going to drain the battery. I'd say if you make plenty of short journeys, Go for it. Maybe even buy the electric car as a second car. Think about what you use a car for and what you need to use a car for. If generally you only pop out relatively short journeys and you don't have to put too much or too many people in the car, then perhaps that is the way to go. We did have mixed feedback, but overall improved confidence and attitudes towards electric cars after drivers had tried them. The use of electric cars also increased during the lifetime of the project. These results are relevant to policy makers, fleet managers and others who wish to introduce electric cars in their fleets.